Good day. This morning we're going to talk about maintenance with no repairs on the Ramvac. Ramvac uses Mobile One oil, synthetic oil. You should stock some synthetic oil with you. It's 15W50. Good oil. Stock it, or either you can get it at any auto parts store around your doctors. Our first level of maintenance is going to be to turn the pump on. This is going to be a little noisy, but we got to do it to make sure the vacuum levels are fine. With all the hand pieces closed on the assistant side in the operatories, the HVE and the saliva ejector, we're going to check our inches of mercury or our suction amount at the pump first. I'll highlight this with a flashlight. Here's our gauge. Red inches of mercury. Yeah, he says we're reading at 10 inches of mercury. Never exceed 12 inches of mercury on this pump. The more you adjust, the more suction, the more amps it pulls, and the hotter the pump runs. If you do need over 12 inches of mercury, it's usually indicative of a problem in the operatories, meaning a leak in the suction line in the operatory. safety issue coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Most of these pumps are remotely switched on a remote wall switch. You could have the wall switch turned off. The staff or the doctors could come back from lunch or from their break not knowing you're working on the machine and turn the machine on. And there you go. This machine has belts and everything. It's very easy to lose digits, fingers, and everything else that's attached to you with it. So for safety's sake, we are going to totally power the machine down simply by disconnecting the power, waiting for all the LEDs to go off. Now we're fine for our maintenance and to do some further checks. First item we're going to check is the oil level. The oil level is readable on top of the oil reservoir. It takes three quarts of oil. There is a side glass very similar to an air compressor that you can check the oil level with. The oil should be halfway up the sight glass. Right here. This is where you add oil in case that you do need to add oil. Every 2,000 hours this machine calls for service. In a busy practice, 2,000 hours can rack up pretty quick. Also, there's an indicator light that flashes every 2,000 hours from a chip in the electrodes. It will also make the remote toggle switch flash as well. That means 2,000 hours have passed and it's time for maintenance. Okay? It will also be indicated by your light flashing on number one, maintenance required. Every 2,000 hours it flashes irregardless of whether it needs maintenance or not. It's still wise to go ahead and change the oil from the filters every 2,000 hours. It's a good money maker. It's a good way to keep your face familiar in the office. It's a good way to keep your accounts up and running. This is your oil drain. When you change the oil, we're going to get into more technical aspects on another video, on an actual service video. The next item we're going to check is our filtration on the back of the machine. Pull up the whole filter cluster, and we will unscrew the filter. Check the filter through the light for opaqueness, dirt particles, and dust particles. This is where all the intake for the vacuum pump comes in at. This is your vacuum relief valve. This is how you adjust the vacuum pressure. We will go into adjusting the vacuum pressure on the technical video. Having looked at our filter, we've ascertained that our filter is okay. 
We'll screw our filter back onto the platform. We'll look inside the filter housing for oil, debris, or moisture, and we look fine. We're going to replace the filter housing and the filter platform. It sets right down by gravity. The suction holds it on. No gaskets. A very simple method. Now, we're going to check our belts next. Gentlemen, these belts are available from DCI through parts at dentalfix.com. I would advise you to keep a couple of belts with you. They're inexpensive relatively, and the doctor is dead in the water without the belts, and you cannot find these belts anywhere I have tried. The only place to get the belts from is from the vendor. So all that being said, I have removed most of the screws on the belt housing, except for two, and I'm going to take those off right now, and we're going to check the belts. This is why I want you guys to power down the machine. If this machine is inadvertently or mistakenly turned on, while you've got your fingers on the belt, it'll take a finger off. And we want everybody to have their fingers. In reality, this entire procedure of taking the fan guard off will take you about 10 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to remove our fan covers, and we have exposed the belt. <coughs> the items you want to check on the belt is, with a flashlight, check for fraying. Check for dusting by meaning of dusting pulverized pieces of the belt on the side of the housing. We look pretty good. You also want to check your gear and pulley alignment. Stand at a relatively good angle. Look, sight it with your eyes, and make sure it's tracking straight from the motor pulley to the turbine pulley. And this one's tracking pretty straight up. If you do have a problem with, with eyeballing it, you can use anything that will give you a straight edge. Part of the belt guard, pull the belt guard up on it, and that can kind of help you get a better perspective on it. Now, we're going to check belt tension. Put your thumb down. If you can depress more than a half inch, the belt is too loose. We'll go into the belt adjustment procedure on the technical video. The belt's good, it looks good, that looks fine. Now, we're going to plug the machine back in and make sure that the belt's not flopping, it's running concentrically. Now, we plug the machine back in, taking care, you're going to be in some dark dank circumstances doing this and it's going to be very hot. So use your flashlight, look all around, make sure that no tools are left around, moving parts, make sure your fingers are clear and we're going to start up. And here we go. The belt looks fine. No flopping, no loss of torque during the power transfer from the motor to the turbine. <coughs> very carefully <coughs> while we're running, we're going to check our drip rates. We have two oilers, one, two, oil side glasses. One drop every 60 seconds will suffice. One drop every 60 seconds will suffice. And this one is oiling just fine. Now, while the pump's running, you want to be very, very, very quiet. Listen to the environment. 
side of the pump of the S1 electrons, we have a reset button hole. It's located about an inch down from the top of the control box. With the machine turned off, take something non-conductive, an ink pen, a Q-tip with the cotton broke off of it, anything, a toothpick, stick through the hole, you will contact a button, and that resets the machine and it turns the maintenance required light off. And it will also turn the flashing light off on the control panel. And your maintenance is completed at that point. One further item to check. With the machine powered down, once again, the back of the machine will check the sensor probe. This is a moisture sensor probe, and it only retains in the machine with a rubber grommet. You want to pull it out, push it back up in, give it a slight twist, and make sure it is firmly secured in the bottom of the chassis. Now, we'll check our reservoir and our holding tank. Remember on a dry vacuum system, no moisture goes through the turbine itself like a wet ring system. Everything is contained in your tank. You have a check valve. The check valve looks fine. This is an earlier model check valve. Your new check valves are going to be transparent or clear plastic where you can actually see into the check valve. The way I always check the tank for sediment debris, whatever, effluvia, is the tank is opalescent, which means translucent. I hold a flashlight up here and let the light diffuse into the tank. It's like a plaster trap, guys. You can look, look at the side of the plaster trap and see styrene in it, different levels of debris, and there is no debris in this tank. The tank looks fine. Also, sniff around a little bit. Sniff for malodors. Sniff for sewage odors and methane odors. That could be indicative of a drain leak. If the st office staff is not versant with the maintenance on the pump, we have several support products to help them. It is your job to educate the doctor and the staff on how to maintain their equipment. It will also endear you to the doctor and the staff and make you virtually indispensable to them, and that's what we want. DCI makes a product called EcoVac. It's extremely green friendly. It's non-foaming. Any kind of cleaner you want to use in a vacuum system must be non-foaming. You go over the staff with the maintenance at chair side about how to aspirate the fluids through the vacuum. Your cleaner concentrate once a week to keep the system clean and clear. That's the best thing you can do for this pump. Again, I want to suggest to you guys, stock a couple of quarts of oil available through DCI, Mobile One. Stock a belt or two available at DCI. You can stock a filter maintenance kit. You can call Paul or myself and we'll give you the part numbers for the maintenance kit for the Bison pump. This is going to be, the Bulldog and the Bison are going to be the most prominent type of dry vac that you're going to see out in the field. And it's going to be the most prominent type of the Ramvac brand. They make two or three bigger pumps, but you will hardly ever see them. If you do run into one of those, please call me. I'll go through the maintenance procedure with you. It takes a different kind of oil. It takes Delton. With that, we fire the pump back up. After we've replaced the belt guard, I'm not going to replace it to save time on our tutorial. Let the, all the LEDs go off, cut the pump back on. Listen again, go to chair side, check your suction, check the amount of suction with the assistant or the doctor. Make sure you check it with somebody that's satisfactory and that will conclude your maintenance. Again guys, let me state, this is a great way to endear yourself to the doctor, to make yourself familiar to the doctor every 2,000 hours. And believe me, 2,000 hours passes quicker than you know it. Again, let me reemphasize safety 
in doing this and power them down, ladies and gentlemen. See, we have moving parts exposed. 